Uh, welcome. Hope you've had a good week so far. It's uh, beautiful weather in Dallas right now, and hopefully it will be for another two or three days, right, RG, <laughs> before it becomes 100 degrees. Um, it reminds me, uh, in my Charlotte years, I had a minis uh, music ministry assistant who was very gifted at Providence Baptist Church. She just was um, way overqualified for the job. Was was a former paralegal and all that. But music ministry can be stressful, you know, at, at times, as all of you know. And every once in a while, under her breath, or not so much under her breath, she would mutter, what fresh hell is this? <laughs> and she never lived in Dallas, Texas in the summer, where it really applies. What fresh hell is this? Thank you for laughing, people. Yeah, yeah. He'll be back at 11, right, now, right after the break. So anyway, thanks. Okay. All right. Just trying to wake you up. But well, honestly, Kyle and I had snow this week. So, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Kansas City area. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me rec uh, let me uh, introduce to you our guest today. And he, he's not a stranger to some of you, Brian Hain, who currently lives in uh, Baltimore area. Um, with his wife Eve and one or two children, Brian. Uh, still one. It'll be two in June. Two soon in June. Wonderful, wonderful. I met Brian first here in Dallas when he was actually a student at SMU and Perkins, studying with Michael Hahn in the Mike Hahn era. Uh, met him through Rosanna Vansel Goosey, who was interning with us at Wilshire. I think, Brian, you actually came over to add some percussion to a youth choir rehearsal. I one think that's right. And yeah. I think that was the very first introduction. Since then, uh, Brian has gone on and now he is the uh, uh, ex director, executive director. I'm not sure about your just, title. Of just the director. Director. I think executive. We're going to promote you today to executive director All right. of the Center for Congregational Song. And I remember uh, Brian and I ate at a Central American restaurant in Dallas when he told me about his vision for the Center for Congregational Song, and I was so intrigued with what he was going to do. And the great thing is many of the things Brian outlined that day at that lunch meeting, he is doing to make our, to animate congregational singing for God's people. And uh, so, Brian, we're so glad you're here today. And welcome yeah, to Polyphony, and uh, we're looking forward to what you have to share with us today. Thanks, Doug. It's great to be with you all. Um, let's sing first, shall we? Share my screen here. Oh. <laughs> Can you all see my soul finds rest? This is from a collection uh, by Dan Damon called At Your Altars. It's a wonderful little collection of short choruses and refrains and things. And this particular song is by Roy Hopp. Um, it's, a, it's a duet. So I'll sing both parts uh, at the beginning just so you can hear them. And then um, I'll just stay on the first part, the top part. And you can feel free to sing the second part or sing with me or create whatever version of the holy Zoom duet you would like. My soul finds rest My soul finds rest My soul finds rest in God alone My soul finds rest my soul find rest, my soul find rest in God alone. My 
soul find rest, my soul find rest, my soul find rest in God alone. Peace. My soul find peace, my soul find peace, my soul find peace in God alone. Let's go to joy. My soul finds joy. My soul finds joy, my soul finds joy in God alone. Let's go back to rest. My soul finds rest, my soul finds rest. My soul find rest in God alone. So yeah, that's um at Your Altars is the name of the collection. It's edited by Dan Damon, so it's got a lot of his stuff in it, but that was by Roy Hopp. Um, and it's uh, Hope Publishing, if you're looking for it. If you have questions for Brian as we go, then you might find that typing them in the chat is a uh, chat thread useful. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Kyle. If you have questions, feel free to interrupt me. That's not a problem. Or just you know throw something in the chat. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Hymn Society and the Center for Congregational Song. Then we're going to go into some breakouts and talk about congregational singing a little bit. And then um, we'll uh, we'll come back and share a little bit and then end with another song. Um, let's see. First of all, since most of you are CBF, <clears throat> my very first church music internship was at Wingate Baptist Church. And I grew, I grew up Presbyterian in South Georgia. Um, and yeah, that's right, Tom. And uh, so I, I had not had a lot of experience with the Baptists. My aunt and uncle were Baptists and stuff, and so I had gone to their church a few times. But um, I went to Wingate, and I got a phone call from... Or No, that's right. I, I was looking for a church to attend, and Wingate Baptist is right there on the right campus. Down. And so I went... And that happened to be the day that they were having a congregational meeting uh, to, it turns out, leave the North Carolina Baptist Convention and join the CBF. And I, di I didn't know this. I was just there. And I was like, well, I'll stay, I'll stay for the meeting. I kind of like church politics and stuff. And so they were getting up and they were testifying. I don't know about this, but I'm sure about this. And I don't know about this. And they were just going at it. And, and they weren't arguing this. They were just being very passionate. In a, in a very like collegial way. And I was like, you know what? I can get on board with this. And so I, I joined the church and then, um, a, uh, Oh, Suzanne. Very cool. Awesome. So I got a call from Ron Bostic after my freshman year, like right before the, uh, right before the semester started my sophomore year and Brian. Yes. Dr. Bostic. Like it was kind of weird. him call me out of the blue in the middle of the summer. Do you want to do a church music internship? I was like, uh, sure, Dr. Bostic. Okay, good. You'll start in September 1st. I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Hung up. And so he decided to start a church music internship at Wingate Baptist. And he was ramping down for retirement. And he used some of his own finance, his own salary to actually fund a, uh, a church music internship. And that's how I got started into church music. As a, as a profession, I'd always enjoyed church music and been a part of it. But anywho, so that's my connection to like the a, CBF. Hmm? Oh, I, I got like this weird echo. That was weird. Let me know if I'm echoing. That'd be odd. Um, so 
I've always loved the CBF because of that connection. And um, but now I work ecumenically. So the hymn, one of the things I love about the hymn society and my work with the Center for Congregational Song is that uh, during the week I'll be with a Roman Catholic group and and then an ecumenical group and then some evangelicals and then like CBF and you know I just like all over the map. And I love that about the Hymn Society. It's one of the few places that combines uh, a deep care for theology um, with a deep commitment to being ecumenical and collaborative. Um, it's one of the few organizations that I've found to be non-competitive, but willing to push each other to be better. So it's, it's just, I just really love it. So the Hymn Society is this unique group of people who all are connected by their love and passion for congregational song. Um, so when you sit down at a table at the Hymn Society, you may be sitting next to a Roman Catholic priest, a text writer who isn't a musician but is a wonderful poet, a church musician, uh, like a Lutheran church musician, and um, someone who works at a publisher. And you'll look around and be like, this is a weird group of people. Uh, <laughs> but what connects them all is that they, they're very passionate about congregational singing and the church's song. So we have a lot to talk about and we have a lot to share with each other. Um, my job for the Hymn Society is to, I, I was hired to start what we call the Center for Congregational Song. And you know, the Hymn Society historically has been very good at taking care of each other. Um, it's, it's a, you know, it's a membership nonprofit, church music. Um, most of you are familiar with that kind of structure. So we're good about like, we reach out to our members all the time. We provide our members with great things. We have a peer reviewed journal. It's the only peer reviewed journal exclusively on congregational singing. Um, you know, so we have this, we have this way of taking care of each other, of being this membership organization. But we decided that if we were to live another hundred years, because next year is our hundred year anniversary, if we're going to thrive, not, not just survive, but thrive into our second century, that we needed to um, create another aspect of the society, not get rid of anything we were doing, but expand what we were doing. And that's the job of the center to kind of go out and find out what else is out there to be like, hey, you know, the hymn society is really great, but you're doing great stuff too. So let's talk. What can we learn from you? What can you learn from us? So part of my job is just to go out and find out what's out there. Um, and then to connect people to those resources. So it, it, it usually works out about 50 50 where I'm pointing people to resources that the hymn society is creating or the center is creating that ourselves as well as pointing people to other resources, um, that are out there that are just great. Um, so in that way, we're kind of ambassadors for the church's song. We're, we're aspiring to be the, the hub where we know we don't know all the answers, but hopefully we'll be able to point you in the right direction you know, so, oh, you know, I don't know, um, like my favorite question I've ever gotten was this person was emailed me and said, uh, I, uh, I'm researching this Lutheran or I'm, I'm researching this Lutheran chorale that's based on a Latin chant. Um, but it seems like the Latin chant that this is based off of was actually originally a different Latin chant, and I can't figure out how these got connected and how it ended up being this German, the Lutheran chorale. And I was like, look, I have no idea. Like, I know those words, but I don't know what you're saying. Um, so, but here are three people that are like experts in the fields of Latin chant and, you know, uh, Lutheran chorales and that kind of time period of the 14, 15, 1600s. And I like connected them via email and then they helped that guy like research and they, and he like figured it out, whatever he needed to know. And I was just like, that's so cool. <laughs> um, 
and uh, yeah, so things like that happen all the time. Uh, we support the work of org. If you're not familiar with that resource, you should be. Uh, Hymnery.org is amazing. Um, so the Hymn Society helped establish Hymnery.org by uh, providing them with our hymnal database um, from uh, in the mid '90s, and um, or that we established in the mid '90s. Um, and we continue to be an active, take an active role in supporting the work of Hymnery and um, things like that. Um, let me share my screen, and and it'll it'll jog my memory of other things I wanted to tell you. Let's see. There you go. So um, our why statement is we believe that the holy act of singing together shapes faith, heals brokenness, transforms lives, and renews peace. Um, that's, that's we, we spent a long time, the, the executive board spent a long time trying to craft this statement to figure out what, why do people join the hymn study? Why do people come to our events? Why do people engage with us? And it's, it's because they also believe that the holy act of singing together does these things. Um, so we've got various resources. Our YouTube channel has been significantly, <laughs> uh, the amount of stuff on it has been significantly increased over the last year because of the pandemic. We've been creating a lot of, of things. Uh, we've got some free webinars, some paid webinars, um, Lots of stuff for students. We want to engage students as much as we can and support them in their work. Um, so a Loveless Scholarship, that's like a free conference if they get a Loveless Scholarship. And this applies to current students as well as students who've graduated within the last three years. Emerging Scholars Forum, you know, this is for young scholars who are creating, you know, papers and doing great research. We have a research grant for people that are doing research in Congregational Song. Um, and then the center is a part of the hymn society, but we're the outward ambassadors, you know, so we have a blog that engages lots of different folks, mostly millennials on the blog team, just to engage that younger demographic and give them leadership opportunities. Um, we have a podcast that's hosted by Ben Brody. Ben Brody's the current president of the, of the hymn society, but he's a wonderful songwriter published by GIA out in uh, Spokane, Washington. Uh, so he hosts our podcast, and that's free. Uh, we try to create as many free or low cost options as possible because part of part of our work is to recognize the historical uh, uh, inequities um, that our general structures have created and thrived upon. And so, you know, and we also think that small churches and mid sized churches need resources just as much, if not more than the large churches that can afford to hire really well-trained staff and have lots of support, you know, small churches with a solo pastor and a volunteer musician, they need help too, but they don't have money to throw at resources a lot. So we're trying to create as much free stuff as possible or very low cost because of those types of things. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what we do in a nutshell. I know that was a little bit of a, of a flyby, but um, I guess I'll stop there and see if there are any questions. And, and then I might give us a couple of things to chew on in breakout sessions concerning congregational singing. I'll, I'll come up with a couple of questions that we could discuss together. But before, before I do that, does anybody have any questions or... Anything you want to say? Uh, so, so I'm Brian, a... um, Morris Driggers, uh, Auburn First Baptist Church in Auburn, Alabama. All right, um, and go tie right. Familiar Hold with uh, <laughs> other uh, other team. Um, familiar with Wingate uh, from time spent in North Carolina and uh, children's choir camps there and oh yeah uh, and we're going to get back to uh, so good to, to have that connection um, quick question for <laughs> you and for anyone else do you have any resources that would help us navigate the resuming of congregational singing uh, in the current um, COVID um, 
atmosphere with um, yeah increase in safety and and that kind of thing. So yeah, so the Hymn Society has a um, a page and and actually I'll just um, <clears throat> I'll put it in the chat. So the Hymn Society has a a uh, page that's just continually updated with resources that either we've created or um, or we found um, a, as much as possible they're research based um, we've been one of the more conservative organizations as far as recommendations I've got some people early on in the pandemic saying how could you tell us not to sing how, how could you do that so flippantly? And I was like, flippantly, man, that's all we do is like, like if we're the ones saying, please don't sing together, you, you know, it's like, you should probably take a, take a second glance. Um, but, uh, so we, we've got a running tab. Um, I've also got, um, on the sinners page, I can, uh, I just published a blog like, yesterday or two days ago on the N NFHS study, the, the, the study that Nats and the, all those organizations have been putting together. Um, they just came out with another update on that. So I kind of tried to synthesize that on what it means for congregational song. Uh, so I'll put that in the chat. So, you know, we, we basically, and, and then, then I've been sitting on an ecumenical consultation it's like it's like a lot of Methodists, Episcopalians, and Lutherans, um, based out of uh, uh, Candler School of Theology in Atlanta um, has been supporting it, and Calvin's also been supporting it. Um, <clears throat> it's an ecumenical consultation uh, on COVID and worship, and they've been putting out some very practical but research-based guides, and everything that that group puts out is passed through the CDC because the clergy CDC representative for uh, that, that lives and works in Atlanta is sits on the consultation. So he gets everything passed through the CDC to make sure that we're matching up properly. Um, that link is, is on the hymn society page for the ecumenical consultation. So they're constantly putting out practical guides. Like they came out one for, they came out one specifically for Holy week and Easter. I'm sure they'll probably do one for Pentecost and reentry and, things like that. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm also working on a, a booklet that'll probably be like a 50 page guide for how to get your congregational, how to get your congregation singing. Um, that, uh, is, is basically a methodology on how to review your, um, your congregational song literature and how to create um, statements on why you do what you do, like why we sing together, um, and then how to implement a game plan that's about a year-long process of really deeply engaging the congregation and getting them singing together. So that'll probably be coming out, I'm hoping, by July. Um, I want to make sure it's done well. But as we re-enter, if you haven't been singing together or if you've been doing all digital stuff or even hybrid stuff, it's a great time to kind of take a step back and review like what have we been doing and what doesn't match or how could we be doing it better and and then implementing some new strategies as we kind of go back in so hopefully that'll be a helpful guide as well yeah does that help absolutely thank you so much awesome yeah no great question i should have i should have talked about covid it's always top of the list right Doug, did you have a question, Doug Haney, earlier? All right, if there's nothing else, then I'll give us a couple questions to, to chew on and break out. So does that sound good, Kyle? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, question number one. I'll put it in the chat so that we have it. What do you do to encourage congregational singing? So the first question is, what do you do 
to encourage congregational singing? I found this to be a useful question just because sometimes it's, um, it's just ignored. You know, it's like, oh, well, yeah, the congregation sings. And, and then you just kind of, they just sing. That's just what they do. <laughs> so what can happen is um, you can, uh, people can kind of just assume that however the congregation is singing is how they're going to sing. As opposed to taking, taking it as a intentional process, something to be nurtured, something that can be worked on or, or taken with some intentionality. I find this, especially with people who are trained as choir directors, and I'm not picking on choir. I'm, I'm trained as a choir director. So like we're so very intentional with our choirs. Oh, you know, this, you know, they've really been, their shadow vowels are terrible. So we're going to make sure in our warm ups over the next three months, I'm going to make sure to have a shadow vowel warm up. Um, and then on this piece, I'm going to make sure to really harp on the shadow valve so that we can really make progress on that. Like we're really intentional with our techniques and our thought process. And then with congregational singing, we're like, yeah, okay, sing a hymn. So, so the question is, what do you do to encourage congregational singing? And that's, it's, it can be very practical, but it can also kind of be meta. So if you, you know, you can go big picture or very detailed on that question. Another question that you might want to chew on instead of what do you do to encourage congregational singing um, is how often do you choose a congregational song that makes your congregation or you as a leader uncomfortable? How often do you choose a congregational song that makes your congregation or you as a leader uncomfortable? It's an interesting question, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer because everyone's threshold is going to be different. Everyone's context is different. You know, if you're like on the edge of being fired, you know, maybe you want to err on the comfortable side for a while and make sure you don't push any buttons. But, if, you know, if you've been there for a long time, maybe you're in a rut. You're like, man, I haven't chosen something that's made anyone uncomfortable or even myself for years. Um, these are all, it's an interesting question I've found. Um, we, once again, kind of going back to like an organist or a choir, choir director, <clears throat> you know, when I'm choosing choral anthems, uh, I, I think, okay, you know, these three are in our wheelhouse. Maybe we've done this one before, so I'll bring it back. These two, you know, we're going to be able to just knock out of the park. But this one, you know, I'm gonna. I'm, this one's gonna be a stretch for us, so I'm gonna schedule it, you know, two and a half months out, and th we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna really work on this one. You know, stretch the choir, right? Growing edge or organist, right? Okay, you know, I'm gonna do these preludes and postludes and this offertory because they're in my wheelhouse, and then, but two months from now, I, I want to be working on this one piece that's been a booger bear, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna nail it. You know, I'm gonna learn it and push my push my pedal technique or whatever. <clears throat> we do those types of things. Do you also do that with your congregational song? Are you allowing the congregation to expand their palate or become uncomfortable as a learning experience? So those are the two questions I'd like to lift up for the, for the breakout sessions. Does that sound good, Kyle, Doug? Perfect. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, I'll look forward to seeing you afterwards and, I guess seeing whoever's in my breakout. Not Tom. Not Tom Granham. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the random uh, selection is, that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, Tom Granham, and it was, so we were roommates at the very first Coursers Guild Institute that was ever done. Uh, we were in the very first graduating class, and the first year we both told the people like, hey, you know, we'll we'll split a hotel room just to save costs. And, and we got paired together and, and became longtime friends. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I wanted to make sure I gave enough time for the interaction. You know, you put Tom Granham in my, in my <laughs> breakout session, right? 
that came from you know random universe kind the of zoom god experience <laughs> <laughs> will say it was providential or That's, indeed <laughs> indeed you know a lot of baptists have gotten on board with that idea too so, <laughs> so we're gonna um we're gonna we wanted to end by by noon so um we should probably start singing huh is there anything else we need to do before we end? Okay. Well, I'm going to share my screen. So this is a, you'll, you'll know the tune. I'm sure if not, that's weird. Um, but, uh, uh, the, the text is new relatively. It was written about two years ago at a songwriting retreat in Nashville that I, that the center helped sponsor. And the text writer is a, a woman by the name of Audrey Assad. I'm not sure she's made the rounds in, in Baptist circles. Uh, she's really big in the Catholic circles, but um, and evangelical <clears throat> uh, kind of stuff. But um, here we go. Let's just sing it, and you'll, I'm sure you'll get it. Uh, this is Your Peace Will Make Us One. It's available on Audrey's website, I think, and it's registered under CCLI. So let me let me get the right keyboard here. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You are speaking truth to power. You are laying down the sword, replanting every vineyard till a brand new wine is poured. Your peace will make us one sing glory now glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah your peace will make us one. <clears throat> Let's do stanza two. I've seen you in our home fires burning with a quiet light. You are mothering and feeding in the wee hours of the night. Your gentle love is patient, you will never fade or tire, your peace will make us one. Sing glory now, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah. Your peace will make us one. In the beauty of the lilies, you were born across the sea. With the glory in your bosom that is still transfiguring, dismantling our empires till each one of us is free. Your peace will make us one. Sing glory now, glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, your peace will make us one. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that last piece. Uh, like I said, it's available, I think, on Audrey's website or something somewhere. Uh, if not, I can email it to you and you can... Um, just claim it on your CCLI license if you have that. Um, Audrey's a second generation Syrian immigrant. So born in the States, but her dad was from Syria. And um, 
she's been on a faith journey that's been bringing her to places that her Roman Catholic and evangelical followings are not very comfortable with. Um, so she needs some some new fans, some new followers, and she's putting out a lot of great music. So check out Audrey Assad. What was the Audrey's title of the battle? Oh, oh it's um, Your Peace Will Make Us One. Your Peace Will Make Us One. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll find it and email it to you, Doug. Okay. okay. And then you can send it out for anyone that needs it. Sure. All right. Hey, Brian, thank you so great. much for being with us today. Always fascinating, always engaging. Uh, really would uh, encourage folks to check out your website because it uh, that, that image of the hub is not only true, I think, in terms of connecting relationships and the dialogue of learning, but wow, there's some really great resources there. I, I find myself turning to it from time to time, just saying, and really just, okay, I wonder what Brian is, is, is putting up this week. You know, it's hard to keep up with you, man. I mean, hey. you, you are the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> just wait until June when I have my second baby. I'll drop off the face of the planet for a while. So, <laughs> Well, and, and you will deserve that for. Okay. Hey, guys. Uh, Thanks. Very quickly before we go, Kyle, you want to tell us about who's up, uh, who's who, who's going to be with us in May? We'll have two meetings in May before we take a break for the summer. Sorry to put you on the spot, Kyle. Oh, sorry. I was just typing something real quick. Um, so I'm just multitasking here. Um, in our chat. Um, so in two weeks, it's Randall Bradley uh, at Baylor University, Director of the Center of Church Music Studies at Baylor. Um, and we're going to be discussing the topic that we kind of put on uh, the back burner that came up in one of our meetings last summer, maybe, about what is a pastoral musician. And Doug and I were talking about that. And I thought after my time as a student and uh, having Randall Bradley as a mentor over the years, I thought he would be a wonderful person to facilitate that conversation. Um, and is always in, uh, someone just very thoughtful and engaged in um, those kind of questions and thinking about the how, <laughs> how we do things. Um, in fact, uh, when I was a student at Baylor, we talked that we said that uh, those that know Dr. David M Music, who, pa who uh, retired last year from Baylor, we said he was like the Dr. Watt on the staff, uh, uh, on the faculty. Uh, Dr. Terry York was the why, and Dr. Bradley was the how. <laughs> and speaking of Dr. Terry York, in the, the next meeting, two weeks after the next one, I uh, forget the date, Terry York's going to be uh, our um, guest, and Mark Lawson is going to be interviewing him. Mark Lawson, publisher, editor uh, at Morningstar, PCS Publishing, is going to be interviewing him because Terry's got a new book coming out. Um, and I'm the working. The title escapes me at the moment, um, but it's it's uh, it's generally about um well as we've talked about here today him singing and he's going to be that's going to be the topic in four weeks great all right well everyone be well be safe uh i hope this is not too nosy but how many of you had vaccine shots any Okay, one, two. Okay, all right, all right. Well, all right. Hope you hope you have a good week, and uh, we'll see you two weeks from today. We'll get something out to you, Brian. Thanks again so much. Okay. Be well, everyone.